So a lot of you have asked um, during consultations if I could advise you about alternatives for hair loss which don't entail either surgery or oral medications that are prescribed such as finasteride or dutasteride. So I thought it'd be quite um, helpful to make a video and just go over some of these treatments and the pros and cons of each one, uh, which gives people a better idea of what alternatives they can try to give them a small edge in terms of treating their hair loss. Now, the purpose of this video, we're just going to deal with androgenic hair loss. As you know, there's a whole um, list of um, causes for hair loss, but we are gonna deal with androgenic hair loss, whether that's in females or men, and androgenic hair, hair loss is basically um, when we refer to genetic balding or genetic hair loss. So let's get to it. Um, the three main mechanisms of hair loss medications uh, revolve around either increasing the blood flow to the scalp to help with um, roots um, or um, cells which are vulnerable to dying. Number two, actually reducing the level of DHT um, within the uh, scalp. And the third mechanism is just to promote the quality and the longevity of the actual hair grafts. Um, let's talk about the first um, main device, which is low laser light therapy. Um, there's lots of different uh, devices out there. There's caps, there's uh, wands. And basically what this involves is applying a very, very low level laser uh, photon beam uh, to the scalp. And the science behind this is that um, it's going to regenerate damaged hair cells um, and also increase the blood flow to the local area. Now, does it actually work? Well, when we look at it from a very... Um, minuscule area and looking at it from a very isolated aspect yes there is some research to support that yes um, some low laser light therapy can aid in healing damaged cells and also increase blood flow however um, i'm very research driven and for me um, i'm not gonna i'm not going to uh, advise my clients or my patients to go and buy a three thousand dollar cap um, if the edge is just one or two percent and the studies that have been done around this therapy are very very small for example there was a 2014 study that only involved 41 patients and yes there was an improvement seen in 39 percent but when, when we talk about improvement we're not seeing voluminous hair or um, increased density we're just seeing a two percent edge in terms of uh, reducing the hair loss. So when people are coming to see, see me in terms of uh, wanting to drastically manage their hair loss, um, a 1-2% to 2 edge is really not going to be enough in terms of giving them what they're looking for. If it's something that you want to do because you want to uh, have an adjunct to medication therapy or surgery or minoxidil, absolutely, there's going to be no harm. Uh, towards using this type of therapy. But just by itself, um, the jury's out and the results are very, very mixed. So for me, um, I'm going to say um, it's not something for me, but everyone's different and you make up your own mind given the research. The second type of alternative therapy for hair loss are your shampoos, which either uh, promote scalp health or they increase blood flow to the scalp, or thirdly, they report um, or they claim they reduce the level of DHT in the actual scalp. Um, some of these shampoos can actually increase the blood flow to the scalp, and they can improve scalp, scalp health in terms of dandruff, um, irritation, etc. Et um, and that small edge is not going to do any any harm. But for goodness sake, don't go out there and go and spend $200 on a shampoo or something. Because the reality is, for any ingredient to actually be absorbed into the scalp, scalp has to be lipid soluble. And these shampoos are simply not. They're not going to stay on the scalp for long enough. The contact's very, very minimal. And 
um, at large, there's very limited research to show that shampoos can actually um, be absorbed into the scalp around where the roots are to provide that protection against DHT. Um, again, there is some research, but it's very, very mildly supportive of this. So once again, use it as an adjunct. Um, be reasonable. Don't be investing hundreds of thousands of dollars into shampoos which claim that they're going to regrow an entirety um, uh, or an entire scalp of hair. And the third main um, treatment modality um, are your medi medications or topical lotions and creams that actually um, increase blood flow to the scalp. And here you've got things like minoxidil. Now minoxidil, I do think it's very helpful and it can provide quite a significant edge uh, to females and men um, who don't wish to use finasteride or in some women where we can't use finasteride because of their age. And what minoxidil does, it's a vasodilator. So it's going to increase the blood flow to the scalp. It's going to um, promote um, cellular repair by increasing this blood flow. Um, and there's also some research to show that it actually thickens each hair shaft. So it will give you more voluminous hair. Now the problems with minoxidil is that when you start using it, it can cause quite aggressive hair loss in some patients, which can be quite alarming if the whole reason that you're using it is for hair loss in the beginning. And the reason that this occurs is because it can shift you from one growth cycle um, of hair quickly into another one. And this is um, not going to infer that you're going to have permanent hair loss. It just means that you've been shifted to a different uh, growth phase of hair quite aggressively and therefore um, the patient sees the hair falling out. This hair will grow back and if you persist on it, um, you will see some benefits. A common question we often get with minoxidil is if I stop it, am I going to lose my hair more aggressively than um, if I wasn't on it? And the truth is, you will see some hair loss, but it's going to take you back to the level uh, where you were going to be if you didn't start minoxidil. So it's going to take you back to that uh, previous trajectory of your hair loss journey. So these are the three sort of main uh, gamuts of alternatives to hair loss. Um, of course, you've got other um, um, alternatives like wigs, um, hair pieces, things that I don't really know a lot about. So obviously that's not really medical or surgical for me. It's more on the um, aesthetic side for the um, um, aestheticians. So yeah, there we are. Hope that helps. If you have any questions or any feedback you want to um, uh, explore other topics, please drop us a line and we'll be very happy to answer these. Thanks.